Hallelujah. Good morning, my viewers. I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's a wonderful day God has given us. It's a time where we he can look at him and just appreciate who he is because at whatever situation we are in, he is still our hope, our strength, our deliverer, our salvation. Praise the Lord. If you are in trouble, God will deliver you. If you are blessed and you are at peace, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. May this increase in, a, in, a, in an increasing manner. I therefore want to We'll start uh, the day with the word of God, the word of life. Praise the Lord. This word is living. This word paves way for us. Hallelujah. And makes things, it bestows us wisdom. It imparts wisdom that is able to, uh, 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 to make us prosper in life. Praise the Lord. It imparts courage and hope. Uh, whenever we pay attention to it. So I want to invite you in this telecast this morning and in the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord bless you through the ministry of his word. Um, I want us to pray for the word. Everlasting God and Father, thank you for my viewers this morning. Thank you, my God, for this moment where we are going to share and partake of your word of life, O oh God. We pray that you may breathe the breath of life, O oh God, in this word, that it may come with power to remove somebody from their troubles, O oh God, and place them high upon the rock where they can see the salvation of the living God in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Bless your word, your word as we, 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 we share it this morning. And bless the viewers as well. In Jesus' precious name, we do pray and believe. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. This morning, we're going to hear the word of God from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And I will read from verse 1 up to verse um, uh, 13 there. And I'll read quickly and then say a few things that are important for you. And the subject of my title this morning is God will provide a way out for you. Praise the Lord. In your situation, in your circumstances, uh, whatever you're going through, child of God, God will provide a way for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We will read from verse 1. It says to get the whole concept of the message. Let us read from verse 1. It says, for I do not want you to be ignorant of this fact, of the fact, brothers, that our forefathers were all under the cloud and they all passed through the cloud that they, uh, uh, they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in a cloud and in the, in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them, and that rock was Christ. Praise the Lord. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. Their bodies were scattered over the desert. Now, these things happened as an example to keep us, praise the Lord, to keep us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did. Do not be idolaters as some of them were. As if, as it, it is written, the people sat down, ate and drank, and got up to indulge in pagan revelry. We should not commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 of them died. We should not test the Lord as some of them did, and they were killed by snakes. And do not grumble. Praise the Lord. Do not grumble as some of them did and were killed by destroying angels. These things happened to them as an example and were written down as a warning for us on whom the fulfillment of age has come. So if we think, if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you do not fall. No temptation has come to you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted. If God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, 
He will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it, under that temptation. Praise the Lord. I say, child of God, my subject today is uh, God will provide a way out, will make a way out of your temptation, of your trials, of your situation, your difficult situation. God will make a way out for you. Praise the Lord. I thank God for that promise of God because God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should he should fail. Praise the Lord. God is so faithful, he cannot break his own word. And he means what he says, and he says what he means. And that is to tell you that you can trust him. Praise the Lord. However, the trusting of the Lord does not accept, okay, the trusting of the Lord and the promise of God that does not exempt us from passing through trials and the challenges of life. And this is why this word of God is coming to us this morning. Praise the Lord. You find that uh, they, they were situa- there are people who live, live before us and they were our fathers in faith. They were descendants of Abraham, the father of faith. And the scripture has written down these things for us and it tells us they were re- these things happened to them as an example and were written down for you and me uh, as an example so that we do not put ourselves in evil things. Praise the Lord. And so he says at the beginning, it first but it gives a highlight of some things that happened to them that even now they are happening to us as human. Buana yesu asifiwe. And that is why we need to take note of this to know for sure that as the scripture has said in verse uh, 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 in verse 13, no temptation has come to you except that which is common to man. In other words, you are not the only one who's passing through that situation. You, child of God, you need to be encouraged that you are not the only one who's passing through those challenges. There are people who are passing through even more severe challenges than yours. It's only that probably it has not come to your attention to meet somebody else who has more difficult situation than yours. Then you feel comforted and see God in your situation. And so the Bible says to us, he starts by uh, uh, revealing to us the fact that we belong to the Lord and we are called by his name. We are born again and we trust in him and we pray and we believe in his word. Yet we still go through challenges and temptation and trials of life. And the scripture started by giving us four warnings there. Paul speaks and says, they, uh, I will read it again. For I do not want you to be ignorant. That is the first warning. God doesn't want us to be ignorant. Don't be ignorant and think that you are the only one who is passing those th- challenges alone. There are many other people who are passing worse challenges than you are. And God is trying to bring you to attention to him that you need to know in your challenges, God has given a promise. He will provide a way out for you. Praise the Lord. God has a way out for you. So don't be ignorant. Don't think God has turned away from you. Don't, God has forsaken you. God has abandoned you. Don't think God is not hearing and listening to your prayer. He is because as, as you are going through that, others also are going through even worse situations than you are. And so he said, don't be ignorant. Ignorance has to be to do with, uh, you know, uh, negligent. You know, you are just uh, hardening your heart not to to, 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 to open your eye to see the reality. And so God says, don't be ignorant. Do not, I don't want you to be ignorant of this fact, brothers, that our forefathers were all under the cloud and they were all passed through the sea. They were under the cloud. They were covered by the presence of God, the glory of God. Just like you and me are children of God, born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, yet passing through trial. He says this and reveals it in this context. He says, they were all baptized into Moses in a cloud in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food and they drank the same spiritual drink as you drink 
and even this morning we are drinking from the spiritual food of the word of God. As they also did the same, praise the Lord. They believed in the word of God through Moses. And so do you believe the word of God through what you read in the scripture and through your pastor and the preachers that preach to you the gospel of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And so we drink from this, the same spiritual drink. For we, they drank from the spiritual rock that was accompanying them. And that rock, say, they say, the word of God say it was Christ. Praise the Lord. Nevertheless, and that is another warning is saying, nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. Why? Because though God gave them a promise, they, in their challenges, in their trials, they started forsaking and turning away from believing and trusting in the promise of God and st started seeking other things to help them. And this became an offense to God and it, it, it showed that they were not fully trusting in their Lord. And God says that don't be ignorant. We can also in our time of challenges turn away from God in that manner. And what does he say, Father? He said, now these things occur as an example to keep us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did. Do not be idolaters as some of them did and were as it is written do not be idolaters as some of them were. As it is written, the people sat down and ate and drank and got up to indulge in bargain revelry. We should not commit sexual immorality. And I know in the body of Christ, there are people right now, young men, even elderly men, even married people, who are, they know, they are conscious that God that does not permit us to fall into sexual sin. Yet, they entertain these things and they are born again. They are children of God. They come to church. They share the prayer. They share in the word of God. They enjoy this kingdom. They know this is above and above before God. Yet, they engage themselves in these things. And God is warning us, don't be ignorant. Don't think this grace of this time, that, that it, was not, it was not then. When these people who are called by God and were delivered from Pharaoh and they were under the cloud, under the cover of the Almighty God, they indulged, indulged themselves in these things. And what happened? He say, we should not commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 of them died. So we perish out of being ignorant, being stubborn, and saying we are living in a time of grace. We know God will forgive us. We will do it today and tomorrow. God will repent and God will forgive us. Let me tell you, praise the Lord. A sin that you do when you know you are doing it and you know God has told you not to do it, you will pay a price for it. There are consequences. They are called consequences. You will pay a hard price. God will forgive you, yes, but the consequence is you may not escape. And so he says, in your trial, in your challenge, the way people are dressing and the way uh, ladies are enticing men, don't fall in prey to them. That temptation is always to everybody, whether you are born again, you are a preacher or not. People are dressing anyhow, but God said, don't put your attention on that. In that temptation, God is saying he will provide a way out. You can look elsewhere. You don't have to fix your eyes on somebody who has uh, uh, decided to lure you up in those sexual uh, uh, appetites. And God says, I will provide a way out. You have the spirit of God that tells you, stop looking. Stop, turn. You belong to me. Jesus is speaking to you. The Holy Spirit speaks to me, to you. He says, Turn your face, turn your eyes from that, that lady, that girl, whoever it is. Turn your attention from that one. Can you remember what God has warned you about? And God will provide a way out for you, praise the Lord, that you may escape that temptation. And God says, I will always provide a way out. Trust in him, praise the Lord. Don't go engaging, hallelujah. And so those warnings were there. Don't set your hearts on evil things. Don't test um, the Lord, don't test the Lord and say that, oh, I will continue like I know God will save you somewhere. And then you start, continue engaging with a lady who's luring you out. 
Young men, you can escape that. Even men who are, born, are married, you can escape that. And God will help you. Praise the Lord. And the fourth thing he says that do not grumble. Some of the things that we are grumbling about, God is saying he does not love grumbling. Uh, I think it's the book of James where he says, do not grumble against one another's brothers, lest you are destroyed by one another. I don't know whether it's in, in, in uh, James or it is in uh, uh, Timothy but, uh, 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 or, or Galatians there. But he says there's a place Paul is warning and say, don't grumble. We children of God um, uh, born again. Uh, we know the Lord, but God tells this issue of grumbling is detestable before God. And uh, the children of Israel, though they had reason to grumble, they grumble and God says here, he, he destroyed them, praise the Lord. And so it is important for you to take note. What happened to them, the Bible says that it was written as an example for us who are living in the fulfillment of age. This is our time. What happened to them, we can escape by virtue of knowing, understanding. If it happened to them, it can happen to us. If the angel destroyed some of them and they were already under the cover of Christ, under the cloud, and they were born again, we can say they were already saved, praise the Lord. It was a picture of salvation from Pharaoh, from sinful one, to salvation, praise the Lord. And they had entered into the cover of God. Child of God, do not entertain the trials that come to you and give them as an excuse for you to commit sin. And God is saying in your temptation, in your trial, in your testing, whatever it is, whether it's about finances, whether sex, whether um, uh, uh, you are being uh, provoked to fight and things like that. In your temptation, God will always provide a way out for you. God has given a promise. You wait for a way out. God will provide a way out for you. Whatever temptation you may want to mention it before God, he will, uh, he will provide a way out of your escape. Whether it's finances, well, and, uh, 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 at this time when uh, it's time of COVID, people are passing through financial challenges, economic hardship, and you are tempted when you find money laying down there somewhere and you know it belongs to, it does not belong to you. You may be tempted to do something for for you to acquire that money to survive. But God is saying, don't go that way. If they did that and they perished and the angels of the Lord did not spare them, then you will not be spared if you choose that way. God says, lean on my promise. Trust in me. I will make a way out for you and I will deliver you from that temptation. Help will come from God. He will command it. You may suffer a little while, but be sure there is a way God will make you escape that temptation. Trust in this God and God will make you escape all evil things that made the children of Israel be destroyed in the desert. Praise the Lord. I pray for you, child of God, and I pray for us that God may provide a way out for us in our challenges, in our situation, where you feel like you are going to abandon your marriage because of financial constraint. Don't leave your husband because he lost his job. Don't leave your wife because now you cannot take care of her. Remain put because God will provide a way out for you. He has promised he will fulfill his word because he's God, faithful and true. Hallelujah. And he will fulfill his promise in your life. Praise the Lord. Tarry in there. Trust in him. He will make a way out of, uh, of that challenge, out of situation. And so I finish with that word of encouragement from verse 12. So if my, uh, it says, no temptation, verse 13, no temptation has saved you except that which is common to man. Know that you are not the only one who is passing that temptation. And God is faithful. Praise the Lord. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. God will provide a way out for you. You will not go beyond what you can bear before, because before you get, you give up, way will have been found and God will have provided a way for you to escape that temptation. Don't give yourself to sin. Child of God, child, that lady, don't give yourself to well, the enticing of that man who wants to pay rent for you and is demanding sex from you. God will make a way out for you. Your rent will be paid. 
Trust in God. Don't depend on those men who de demands that they have to lay with you to keep you afloat. God will keep you afloat himself. God will make a way for you. He'll provide a way for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I pray for my viewer. Today, my God, I'm a savior. Where, my God, your people have reached the dead end. Make a way for them. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. For you are the way maker, oh God. You are the way maker. You make way where there seems to be no way. And the doors you open, no man can shut. And the doors you shut, no man can open. Therefore, God, who open doors, even doors for good jobs, good assignments, good businesses, open doors for your people, make a way in Jesus' Jesus' name, we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Trust in God. God bless. Bye-bye.